Good morning. It is that time again. I am finally able to sit down and do my MTB Slam for the month of July. Um, this is the MTB Pro Box. Uh, I'm going to dig into it in just a second. I want to show you something new from Mystery Tackle Box real quick. It's called Catch Company. This is a box that you actually get to go into to Mystery Tackle Box's website and you click on Catch Company and you can see the box and see what's in the box. And so you can pick according to the themes. They'll have like six, seven, I don't know how many different themes they have. But um, so each box has a theme and each box has premier tackle in it. Um, and yeah, you're gonna pay you're gonna pay more for it, but you're gonna know exactly what you get and you know it's gonna be worth it. It's not a surprise. And uh, that's kind of what I like about it. So with this box, real quick, I got you know the top water box is what I've got, and some of these are going to be some of the boxes are going to be themed or picked out by professionals, by some of the elite guys and things like that. So it's going to be pretty cool little deal. But uh, I got the Cavatron Buzz Bait, the Live Target Frog, Live Target Bluegill, a full pack of uh, of twist lock hooks from Owner, the uh, the River to Sea Rover top water bait and then some zoom horny toads so uh, I mean and I knew that's what I was gonna get so that is the catch company you don't have to be a subscriber to mystery tackle box to get it all you have to do is go in and create a free profile and you can go pick it up so that's catch company pretty cool all right enough of that let's get my MTB Pro out uh, the MTB Pro box for the month of July most of you probably already know what's in it <laughs> but um i'm gonna do this real quick i've got a top water bait a splash tail um little uh prop bait from lucky craft a rapala dt6 in one of my favorite colors mustard is that what they call it still oh chartreuse brown is what they call it now it used to be mustard or something like that might be a different color um from cabin creek you get a salty saturn a uh, little hooktail worm. Gambler. What are these? These are the burner craws. Um, pretty cool little deal. Little flipping bait. Little dragon bait. A jig from Lucky Craft called the Skip Jig. I didn't know Lucky Craft made jigs. That's pretty cool. And then the uh, heavy, ooh, shaky head. The brush head from uh, from Owner. Full pack of that. So, pretty cool little baits. I hate to cut this short. I'm just trying to make this video as short as I can because they tend to get a little long. Um, so, the Splash Tail from Lucky Craft is a $15 bait. The um, Rapala DT crankbait is $7.99. Skip and Jig is $6. The Burner Craw is $4.69. The Saturn Worm is $2.54. The Brush Head is $6. And the Bite Stick Max. Oh, what's that? Oh, yeah. some attractant uh, bait mate bite stick. So, and that's $5. Man, that's expensive for a little thing. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's what I got for it. I'm going to tie these on some rods real quick. I don't know why I closed the box up and, uh, and uh, jump on it. Since it's still fairly early, sun hadn't quite beat the snot out of the water yet, but it's getting there and I'm a little late getting started for top water. But uh, that's typical. I need to start opening these boxes the night before. But I'm starting off with the um, with the Lucky Craft prop bait. It's a top water bait. What's really cool about this prop bait is that the the uh, the little spinners on it are on ball bearings, so they spin really really easy. I've never seen that before. That's pretty cool. But the way you fish a prop bait, I've got it on a seven foot. Oh, nope, six foot ten medium action rod, 15 pound monofilament because I want the line to stay up out of the water. And, uh, ooh, little bluegill just hit it. Then I caught a leaf. But, uh, you know, gear ratio of the reel really doesn't matter. But uh, it's a topwater bait, my favorite kind of bait to throw around brim beds. Um, and I may do that a little bit later as, as the sun gets up is go and find these brim beds and throw it around a brim bed and see what happens. For some reason it drives bass crazy when they're out around brim beds. It's also a good bait to fish around uh, bedded bass. 
you throw it out, you get it over top of the bed, or you spin it to the bed and you just stop. And then you pull a little bit and you stop. And those blades, oh, there was a hit from a bass. Um, he missed it. <clears throat> but uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> But, uh, and those blades just drive the bass crazy. So anyway, it's pretty simple. You just throw it out and you can fish it fast. You can fish it slow. My favorite way to fish it is to just let it, let it sit there and pull, let it sit there and pull. And what's really cool about this bait is once you stop it because of those ball bearings, this is what I'm noticing right now, those ball bearings keep spinning a little bit. And that's what caused that bass to, to strike just then. Pretty cool little bait. Not much to it, pretty easy to fish. All right, so the next bait is the Rapala DT6 uh, crankbait. It's a crankbait. You wanna throw it out to the depth, it dives to six feet deep. And one thing I like about DT series is you know they're gonna dive to six feet deep if you have them on 12 pound test line. I have it on 12 pound test fluorocarbon. Um, and I'm just kind of throwing it out on this on this little island, off this little uh, point off of this island. But it's a, uh, the thing with crankbaits, the, the, what I fish them on is I like to fish them on a medium moderate rod. This is a medium heavy moderate. My medium moderate is at home. But this one will work. I just have to be a little bit more careful casting it. Um, but I like a moderate action rod because those bass will grab those grab the bait and you need a little bit of give in that rod, a little bit of bend in that rod to, to, to hook the fish, you know, and to, uh, and to keep the fish buttoned up as they're fighting. Uh, that's the worst thing is they can throw these things really easy if you got a stiff rod. The, thin, the, the flippier or the, uh, the more moderate a action of the rod, the, uh, the less the fish can throw it because it still keeps tension on your line. It doesn't pop back to straight really quick. Anyway. Got off on a little tangent, but uh, with a crankbait, you, it's important to know the depth. That's why I like the Ed, the the uh, the uh, XDs from uh, Strike King, and I like the uh, the DTs, is because I know the depth. I know what depth they dive at. The ones I grab the, with the line I'm on and everything else, pretty consistent across the board. Um, but you want to bang into things at that depth or, or less. So I'm throwing it out up into about two and a half feet of water. I'm sitting in five feet. Bunch of junk on the bottom, I don't know what it is. But the goal is to bump anything I can and if the fish is close to it or bass is close to it and you bump it, causes that reaction strike. This watercolor is really green. They fertilized this lake recently and so there's a fish right there. Oh, it's a good one, too. I hope he's hooked good. Hold on, guys. I got to get my net. Yeah, he ate the whole thing. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Was not expecting that. Look at that fish. And the thing, and I, what happened was I bumped it up against a stick or something down there. And he came unglued and he hammered it. So that's one fish for today. I like crankbait fishing, but I bumped it. And so you notice my hook set. Once the fish hit, I just tightened the rod up and I let the hooks do the work. Then I tried to keep as much flex in that rod as possible to keep him from throwing it. Of course, he ate the whole thing. So, good fish. Let's go ahead and let him go. Pow, that was awesome. <laughs> All right, so with a crankbait, I'm gonna give you a few little tips about a crankbait. So, I'm wanting that crankbait to bump into stuff. It doesn't just mean that I keep reeling. I want you guys to watch my hands as I'm bumping into things. Watch what I do. And I'm gonna kinda talk you through it. Watch my hands, watch how I'm reeling. Okay, when I bump something, I usually stop or slow down to a crawl. It lets me know my bait is close to, on the bottom. And the trick is that you want that bait to, you want that crankbait to look like it's something feeding on the bottom, so it's temp. Tap, 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 tap. And it's going really, really slow. Now, a balsa wood crankbait like this one is, tends to, 
it floats really fast. And I like that when you're fishing around brush and things like that, but uh, it, it makes it to where you have to fish it a little bit faster than I normally would um, a plastic one. But it doesn't mean it don't work, just different. And I have to keep that in mind. So I'm running around and I bump into something and I stop and I stop and I just kind of, I'm trying to just squeak it through that area just as slow as I can and just, just bump something else. And the reason you do that is you'll come along and you'll hit something and that you, you stop and that thing floats up and there's a bass behind it. It floats right into that bass's face and he's got no choice but to grab it. And that's actually when you should expect a bite. So, little tips about crankbaits. All right, so this one, <clears throat> this is the Lucky Craft Skip Jig. If you guys can see it right there, hopefully it's in focus. If not, I'm sorry. And what I did is I put the little curl tail um, Saturn worm from Cabin Creek as a trailer kind of to give it that little finesse appeal. I don't know why they call it a skip jig because it doesn't, it's a finesse jig. Yeah, you can skip a jig, you can skip any jig if it's designed right. But that just looks like a little finesse jig is all that is and probably needs the skirt or the uh, weed guard trimmed down. Let me show you how I trim it down. All right, so I like my weed guard. See the, uh, the barb right there on the hook? See if I can get my hands out of the way. The barb right there, I like my weed guard to be in line with that barb or be at the same length as where that barb is. So all I do, these aren't the best scissors to do this with. But anyway, as I trim it down like that. And so when I fold it down, it comes to that weed guard. It's a little short, but not too bad. Still hits the tip of the hook. That's what I like. I want it to come just a little bit further, but I cut it too short. It'll work though. I don't particularly like fishing finesse jigs if you guys have watched my uh, my previous MTB slams, but um, they do have their place. They catch a lot of a lot of smaller fish. I mean, big jigs, I like big jigs because when I get bit, I know it's gonna be a good fish or the possibility of it's gonna be, of it being a good fish is, is a lot greater. But with a finesse jig, if you just wanna go out and catch fish on a jig, it's probably a really good bait to throw. So enough of my downers. What I'm doing is I'm throwing it into a brush pile. You let it sink to the bottom, and the way you know what's on the bottom is your line goes slack. You know, you'll see your line going out, and all of a sudden it stops and it goes slack. That means your bait just hit the bottom. Let it sit there for a second, and I'm just gonna shake it. Because a lot of times that initial fall is critical. The fish hears the, the, the jig splash on the top, sinks down to the bottom, and they see it sinking, and they follow it down, and they sit there and stare at it. You let it sit there for four or five seconds and then you just shake it and they've got their nose down too and a lot of time that's when they hit it. So that initial fall is, is important. Pay attention to your line as it fall, it's falling. If it does any jumping and stuff like that, it's probably a fish. Now, one misconception about jig fishing that a lot of people, you hear a lot of people say is you don't feel a bite on a jig. That's a bunch of bull. 90% of the bites that I get on a jig are they want to kill that bait. So they think it's a crawfish and they go and they clamp down on it. Very few of them will just slurp it up and walk with and, and swim with it. Um, so if you feel a thump or a tap, pull your line tight, see if there's a fish on it. And then when you, when you feel a fish, hammer it home. With this finesse jig, I'm fishing it on a medium action spinning rod. So it's kind of a, you know, for a spinning rod, it's got kind of a big backbone kind of a stiff backbone and it's perfect to be able to set the hook on this jig i've got a 15 pound floor or a braided line to a to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader uh only because i'm lazy and don't want to tie on a 10 pound but it should be okay all right i'm gonna pull up here and fish this rock this little bit of rock that's sitting up here on this point i think i got way off of it all right well hopefully i don't get this thing hung up in this rock pile but we're gonna throw it up there anyway it's the same rock pile I caught that fish on with the crankbait. And typically a fish that size or any, any bass for that ma matter is not alone, especially in something like that. Brush pile, rock pile, tree, something like, something like that. They'll, uh, they'll 
still stay in the same place. I'm still falling. I must have fallen off a rock. And I'm just going to drag it. It's got the little curl tail worm on it. I don't think it really matters with this, what it is. You know, a finesse little craw bait would work too to make it look like a craw, but I'm just making it look like something that's yummy to eat. As I get up to the rock pile, up on top of the rocks, I like to shake it. Anything, anytime I get a chance or it stops and I get a chance to shake it or it gets hung on something, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sit there and shake it. So, I left at about 10.30 this morning and picked up a, to go to a, a meeting, a little lunch meeting that I had and picked up some stinking straggler that his mama had left him. He's just a family. <laughs> Pretty much the winter today has been the crankbait. I've gotten three or four bites, a couple of good, one good fish, one got off at the boat. Um, and Jake's been schooling me with a Carolina rig. Uh -huh. But it is what it is. Um, we're going to try to fish as long as we can. We've got a thunderstorm forming right here and one down at the south end. Uh, still too far, a, a long ways away, but if they start moving this way, we're out. Hopefully they won't, but uh, we'll see. All right, so even though we're standing and we're fishing right here in front of a, a little beach on this lake that there's quite a few loud people on, uh, I'm gonna try to end this video. The only one that I did not use today and did not talk about was the Gambler little flipping bait right here. Um, actually, Gambler flipping baits are some of my favorite ones to, to flip into heavy, heavy cover. There's no heavy cover out here. And this time of the year, I really, me personally, I don't have any confidence on a crawfish, in a crawfish bait. So I just didn't feel like throwing it. Um, you know, you can tell I, I tried to make that finesse jig look like a little, little bluegill. Got one good bite on it, didn't get the hook set in it, and that was it. Crankbait was the winner, the little DT6 from a Rapala. It's what they wanted today for the most part. I know they wanted it slow and dragged and stuff like that. And I, that's why I've got Jake fishing a Carolina rig and he's kicking my tail right now. Um, but it is what it is. Don't forget the catch company box. Um, go check it out. Go look what's in the box for this next year or for next year, <laughs> for this next month. Um, and, uh, and you know, just check out the themes. And if you're interested, buy them. It's no big deal. There, there's limited boxes. So get them, get them as, while you can. Um, I'll put the link to that into the description, or you can find it on the Mystery Tackle Box uh, website. With Mystery Tackle Box, you can get uh, the first box for $4.99, first regular box. You can upgrade to a pro box for $9.99 and all that other stuff you can find out on the website. I'm not going to over promote this thing. Um, but anyway, so like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out in the water, go out and catch some fish. Have a great day. See ya.